As you watch this teaching, please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see this message. This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Friends, this is Rick Renner, and today I'm at the Pushkin Museum of Fine Arts downtown Moscow. I wish I could just pick you up and bring you here to see the amazing treasures in this place. But behind me is a 15th century column from a German cathedral that is surrounded by prophets. And of course, it begins with the prophet Moses. But as you continue walking around the column, you see King David, who also was a prophet. Then you come to Jeremiah. After Jeremiah, you see Zacharias, and then you see Daniel. And finally, you come all the way around where we see the prophet Isaiah. Prophets were very important in the Old Testament, but also in the New Testament. We know they're still active today because in Ephesians 4 verse 11, it tells us Christ gave some to be apostles. We believe that he gave apostles and there are still apostles working in the church. But then Paul adds, and he gave some to be prophets. That means prophets are also active in the church and will be until the end of the church age. But what does the word prophet really mean? Well, it's a compound of two Greek words, the word pro and the word phemi. When you compound the two words together, it forms the Greek word prophetes, which we translate as the word prophet. And today, we're going to dissect this word and find out what the different parts mean and what they mean when you put them together. And we're going to see four aspects of the prophet's ministry, not just in the Old Testament, but also in the present, and in the end time church. But first, I want you to see this. 30 years in the making, Rick Renner's new book, Apostles and Prophets, is being called Essential Teaching for Every Believer. And now, this book is available anywhere books are sold or online at renner.org. This beautifully bound 750 page book is the definitive study available on Apostles and Prophets. When you call or go online today and get Apostles and Prophets, you'll learn how this essential teaching has been overlooked in the modern church and why it's important for every believer to understand the Bible's definition of these roles. This book lays a biblical, spiritual, intellectual, and historical foundation to the words Apostle and Prophet. And I believe this book will biblically give you what you need to understand the roles of these gifts in the end time church. Through its detailed information, Apostles and Prophets allows you to have correct apostolic vision for the church as it is laid out in the New Testament, and that we biblically understand the roles of Apostles and Prophets and how they are to function in these last days. Through beautiful illustration and detailed descriptions, you'll see what it was like in the early church and how early church leaders operated within these ministry gifts and will make this book a treasure for you and your family for years to come. Call now to get Apostles and Prophets for just $30 or go to renner.org. Great as a gift or for your own Bible study. Don't miss this special offer. My friend, I'm so glad you're with me today and I really want you to order my book, Apostles and Prophets. This is a powerful book. Look at it. I put a lot of work into this book and I want you to devour it. And you ought to order several because for sure you're going to want to share this with somebody else, maybe with your pastor. He will really appreciate having a copy of Apostles and Prophets. And today I'm going to be teaching you from this book about the ministry of the prophet. But we're also offering you my series by the same title. It's based on this program. It's 15 parts. It's called Apostles and Prophets, Their Roles in the Past, in the Present, and in the last day's church, and it comes with a wonderful study guide. You can order all these things by going online or by giving us a call. And please, when you reach out to us, let us know how to pray for you. Our partner care ministry is a place where miracles occur every day. And if you need a miracle in your finances, in a relationship, in your health, I don't know what area of your life you need a miracle. But if you'll reach out to us, we'll pray and Jesus will really do something miraculous for you. But hey, send us your email 
or give us a call so we can begin to pray with you right now. But today, we're going to look at the ministry of the prophet, and I'm going to begin teaching you from page 485 in my book, Apostles and Prophets. The word prophet is based on the Greek word prophetes. It's a compound of two words, the preposition pro, which has a wide range of meaning, and the second word is phemi. The word phemi means to speak or to say or to communicate. And this tells us right up front that a prophet is a speaking gift, it is a saying gift, or it is a communicating gift. But that little preposition pro carries four different meanings that are very important for us to understand the various aspects of a prophet's ministry. And let's begin with aspect number one. The word pro means to be in front of, in front of, and it pictures the prophet's responsibility to stay in front of the Lord. This pictures a prophet who stays before the Lord and sensitizes his spirit to hear the Lord's voice so he can capture the message that God wants to communicate to his people. The word fami, the second part of the word prophetes, means that eventually a time will come when he has to move from being before the Lord to communicate the message. After he spends time seeking the face of God for clarification about the message that God wants him to deliver, the prophet will be dispatched to speak on behalf of God to a specific person or to a group of people. But his first task, we know from this word pro, means he is to linger before God's presence to ensure he correctly understands the exact message that God wants him to deliver to his people. And this reminds me of what God said in Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 1 to 3. Listen to this. God said to Ezekiel, Moreover, son of man, eat that thou findest. Eat this roll or scroll, which was God's message, and go and speak unto the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. That in this verse, we find that before a prophet can speak, first he has to digest the message which God wants to give him. For a prophet to hear God's word and deliver it without first tasting and digesting every part of it himself is strictly forbidden. Before he can deliver the message in the power of the Holy Spirit, he has to become intimately aware of every nuance and every part of the meaning of what God wants to communicate. For a message from God to be preached in the power of the Holy Spirit, a prophet must fill his inner being with the word that God has imparted and let it affect him completely. And only then can he step into the pulpit and publicly deliver a word from God with authority and with power. This shows the importance of a prophet, prophet lingering or staying before the presence of the Lord. And this practice of lingering before God in preparation for public ministry is true about every fivefold ministry gift. But the Greek word pro- Contained in the word prophetes, the word prophet makes it abundantly clear that the chief occupation of a prophet is not speaking but waiting before the presence of the Lord. So, the first divine assignment for a real prophet is to be before God's presence, to hear his message, to capture his heart, and to devour, consume and digest what God speaks to him. God expects him to put aside his own feelings and thoughts so God's word can be fully ingested, assimilated, understood, and then delivered in power, even if certain parts of it are not enjoyable to consume. He has to taste it, ingest it, assimilate it, before he can really deliver it in the power of the Holy Spirit. This takes time. And the Greek word for a prophet, the Greek word prophetes, categorically means that spending substantial time before God to capture God's heart and to really understand his message is the chief occupation of a prophet. Now, most people generally do not understand the substantial time 
that a prophet spends in the presence of God. They see a prophet publicly, prophetically move, and it looks like it is very spontaneous. But they don't understand the time that prophet has spent before the presence of the Lord. That prophet's been preparing his spirit, digesting the message, and suddenly a moment comes when he's dispatched and he speaks, and it may look very spontaneous, but in fact, that prophet has been spending a lot of time before the Lord to get the message. So this word prophetes with a little preposition pro tells us emphatically that a prophet must spend time before the presence of God, number one. Number two, the word prophetes pictures a prophet's public position to speak in front of others. Because that little word, the preposition pro, also means in front of. And here it pictures the prophet that has been dispatched. He doesn't receive a message just to have it for himself. God dispatches him. Once a prophet has heard and understands God's message in heart and has tasted and internalized that message for himself, then he is dispatched from before God to stand in front of people to speak the message. God has authorized him to speak as the mouthpiece of God. This is so powerful. So first, he's before God, but then he's dispatched to stand in front of people. And every prophetic voice is to hear or see the message and deliver it just as God expects. Listen to this. If the message contains truths that are unpleasant to hear, difficult to consume, and painful to digest, God expects prophets to deliver his message in the power of the Holy Spirit regardless. If a God-called prophet is willing to fully embrace, fully obey, and fully deliver God's message in the power of the Spirit with no mitigation, those who listen and who are willing to fully receive what the Spirit has to say will be transformed by it. Wow. But do you see, once a prophet has finished spending time in the presence of God, then he is dispatched to stand in front of people to speak until God has clearly spoken and people have understood the message of the Lord. Then we come to meaning number three. The word prophetes begins with a little preposition pro, which number three means to speak on behalf of, on behalf of. First, the preposition pro means in front of. Second, it means to stand in front of people. Number three, on behalf of, on behalf of. What does this mean? That little preposition pro means when the prophet finally stands in front of people, he does not speak on his own behalf, but he speaks on behalf of the Lord. He is to speak on behalf of Jesus and to accurately represent his heart and his message. And God expects a prophet to be a clear channel with a clear message given to him by the Lord. And as the official spokesman of the Lord, a prophet's job is to announce with clear and unquestionable articulation the desires, dictates, orders, or the message that God wishes to express to his people. And as God's spokesman, prophets are expected, they are expected to be prophetic voices to the church and as such, they must adhere to the message God has entrusted to them, regardless of whether the crowd listening likes it or not. He is not there to speak on his own behalf. He is there to speak on behalf of the Lord. That's what this little preposition pro means. And as part of the prophet's ministry, speaking on behalf of God includes addressing hot social topics and cultural issues that need to be addressed from the viewpoint of Scripture. And it is essential for God's spokesman to speak up and communicate what God says on controversial cultural issues in order to help God's people stay anchored in truth in spite of a world that is morally wobbling and even free-falling all around them. Wow. He is not to speak on his own behalf but he is to speak on behalf of the Lord. Number four, number four. As we've seen, the Greek word prophetes is our word prophet and the preposition pro at the beginning of this word 
carries multiple meanings. And now we see that the word pro also means to speak in behalf of, in behalf of. First of all, we've seen that this word pro means a prophet is to spend substantial time before the presence of God. Number two, we've seen that this preposition pro means once he has been before God and has received God's message, he is dispatched to stand in front of people. Number three, we've seen that this preposition pro means once he stands in front of people, he's not to speak on his own behalf, but he's on speaking on behalf of the Lord. And now, number four, we see this little preposition pro can also mean in advance. And it depicts the prophetic ability of a prophet to speak in advance or to foretell future events. This is amazing. This is not what a prophet does all the time, but the Greek word prophetes emphatically means that a true prophet's ministry will at times include the supernatural ability to foretell events, to hear or see what the Spirit of God is showing him in advance of some event. And if you study the Old Testament and the New Testament, you will find that prophets in the Old Testament and in the New Testament from time to time really did foretell future events. For example, in the Old Testament, prophets prophetically pointed to future, the future coming of the Messiah, and they foretold such events as Israel and its various captivities and final restoration to Israel. They foretold that. They foretold the rise and fall of kings and kingdoms or empires. They foretold invading armies, defeated foes, and times of both captivity and freedom. They foretold economic blessing and also at times economic hardships. They foretold about weather, including rain and drought. They foretold different ages and different dispensations. They foretold the very end of the ages and events that still lie before us now. Foretelling things in advance is a part of a prophet's ministry. It's a part of his supernatural equipment. So if you look at the word prophetes, which is a compound of two words, the word pro, a little preposition, and the word femi. The word femi means to speak, to communicate, or to shed light on a subject. So we know that a prophet is one who speaks. A prophet is one who communicates. He is one who sheds light on some important subject. But that little preposition pro, at the very beginning of the word prophetes, really carries these four ideas. Number one, staying in the presence of God. That's where a prophet spends most of his time. What he does publicly is small compared to the time that he just spends before the presence of the Lord. Number two, once he has received the heart of God, he's captured what God wants to communicate. He is dispatched to stand in front of people where he speaks as the mouthpiece of God. Number three, this little preposition pro means once he's speaking as the mouthpiece of God, he is not to speak on his own behalf, but he is to speak on behalf of the Lord, which means a prophet cannot use the pulpit for his own advantage. He is only there to speak on behalf of the Lord. He cannot mitigate the Lord's message. He is to deliver it clearly as the mouthpiece of God. And number four, Sometimes this little preposition pro carries the idea of telling something in advance or foretelling the future, which means there are moments, it's not always, but there are moments when a prophet has the ability to foretell future events. All of that is in this word prophetes, which is translated as the word prophet in the Old and in the New Testament. And all four of these meanings have to do with Old Testament prophets and New Testament prophets. Now, you may ask, well, when they're in the presence of God, how do they hear? How do they see? And remember, there are two kinds of prophets. First, we have the word navi, the Hebrew word, which describes prophets who hear something. Then you have the word ra'ah, which describes prophets who see something. But whether they hear 
or whether they see how do they receive that divine communication from God? How do prophets prophetically operate? Well, that's a very, very important question. And actually, the Apostle Peter is the one who answers that question. And when we come back in the next program, we're going to see how prophets prophetically operate, and you're going to learn something very important. Prophets are able to hoist their spirits like sails so they can catch the wind of the Spirit. And if God is not moving upon a prophet, a prophet cannot prophetically operate. But if God suddenly moves upon the Spirit of a prophet, He is like a ship with a sail. Suddenly He is able to move forward. He's able to prophetically operate, which means prophetical operation depends entirely, entirely upon the movement of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to make this very, very clear to you in the next program, and I don't want you to miss the next program. Wow, it's going to be good. But remember, I'm offering you my book, which is called Apostles and Prophets, Their Roles in the Past, the Present, and the Last Days Church. And if you're hungry to know more about the ministry of prophets, my friends, you need to dive deep into this book. There are pages and pages and pages and pages about prophetic ministry. This book will really open this subject to you and help you understand how prophets operate and who is a prophet and who is not a prophet. We need to understand that. But hey, I'll be back in just a moment and I'm going to pray for you. These days, a lot of people are being called apostles or prophets, but are real apostles and prophets still alive, well and operating in the body of Christ today? In this much needed, powerful series, Apostles and Prophets, Rick Renner covers what an apostle is and what an apostle is not. What are the signs of a true apostle? Why would anyone claim to be an apostle if he wasn't an apostle? What does the word prophet really mean? What do we know about how real prophets do and do not operate? What about false prophets? This 15-part series is available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $24. And right now, we urge you to get Rick's new book, Apostles and Prophets, their roles in the past, the present, and the last days, with over 700 pages of information to help fortify a solid foundation underneath your life for the special introductory price of $30. Joseph Z, founder of Z Ministries and best-selling author, says, Armed with his Bible, historical examples, and decades of tenured experience, Rick has produced a scholarly masterpiece that will right-size the mania, purge the dysfunction, confront willful ignorance, and cause celebration among the lovers of the Word of God. And Flashpoint host Gene Bailey says, this is not a stuffy manual on how to be an apostle or prophet. You will want to keep this book nearby the next time a question arises on the subject of apostles and prophets. Don't miss this exciting offer, the 15-part series, Apostles and Prophets, and the insightful and penetrating book, Apostles and Prophets. Call the number on your screen or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey friends, this is Rick Renner and today I am standing in the foyer of Rick Renner Ministries in Tulsa, Oklahoma and I just wish I could pick you up and bring you here to see all the wonderful ministry that is happening in this facility where we receive thousands and thousands of phone calls from people just like you who reach out to us for prayer and for teaching they can trust. Proverbs 10, 21 says, the lips of the righteous feed many. And we know that's our job. Our job is to feed many. And I wanna say thank you to you for everything you've helped us do with your giving. You helped us construct our studio, purchase this building. And now in phase three of our ministry expansion program, we're wanting to pay this facility off so we can liberate all that money to take the teaching of the Bible around the world on additional channels and venues. And by being a part of our giving team, you can really help us make this happen. If you're not already a part of our giving team, please pray about joining us. And together we can join hands and through teaching of the Bible and by ministering to people that reach out to us and by sending teaching products around the world, we can really change people's lives. And it's amazing to me that today it's never been easier to make an impact in somebody else's life right from where you are. So thank you for praying about being a part of our giving team. And the moment you join, I want you to really expect the power of God to show up in your life.
I want to thank you for spending time with me today. I want to ask you, are you a partner with our ministry? If not, would you please become a partner with our ministry and help us take the teaching of the Bible to people around the world? Remember, everybody does not have available to them what you have available to you. And there really are people that are crying out to God, saying, God, please send me somebody with teaching that I can trust. And I believe that's our job. We're told in Proverbs 10, 21, that the lips of the righteous feed many. And through this program and through all of our teaching materials, we are feeding many people the Word of God. And when you are a partner with our ministry, and a partner is anyone who regularly gives to our ministry to help us, you help us take the teaching of the Word of God to people all over the world. You really do. And the moment you become a partner, we're going to send you Denise's book called The Gift of Forgiveness and my book called Life in the Combat Zone. We always send these two books to anyone who becomes a partner with our ministry as our way of saying welcome to the family. And I want to remind you that today we're offering you my series called Apostles and Prophets. It's 15 parts. Their roles in the past, the present, and the last days church, and it comes with a wonderful study guide. And we're also offering you my book by the same title, Apostles and Prophets. And I really want you to have this because I believe this book will make a difference in your life. We need to know what the Bible says about this very foundational topic. And my friend, when you reach out to us, would you please let us know how to pray for you? When our phone rings, and we meet you on the other end of the line or we open our inbox and there is an email from you, we are so happy because that is our opportunity to release our faith and engage with you in prayer. And God responds and God really moves. So let us know how to pray for you. But you can order all these things by going online or by giving us a call or call us or send us your email so we can pray for you. But let me pray for you now. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus that you want to speak to all of us, whether we're prophets or not. You want us to stay in your presence until we hear what you have to say to us. Help us, Lord, to consecrate the time, to linger in your presence until we hear your heart. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you tomorrow. But remember Ecclesiastes 8.4. It says, where the word of a king is, there's power. Hey friends, we're coming to an area near you and we want to invite you to come to one of our meetings. Sunday, February 5th, we're going to Church for All Nations in Colorado Springs and we will be with pastors Mark and Linda Cowart. Then on Sunday, February 12th, we're going to be at Legacy Church with Pastor Jeremy and Sarah Pearsons in Green Mountain Falls, Colorado. Then on Thursday, February 16th, Denise is having a women's meeting at the Stony Creek Hotel in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. On Saturday and Sunday, February 18th and 19th, we're going to be at the Living Word Christian Center with Pastor Mac Hammond in Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. And on Sunday, February 26th, we're going to be at Faith Family Church with Pastors Michael and Vicki Bang in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. But please go to our website to affirm all these times and all these dates and we look forward to seeing you there. This program was made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. If you enjoyed that teaching, please like, subscribe, and comment so more people can see it.